What's up, guys? Jay Daniel here with my co-host Victor Marshall. He's gonna he's gonna drop some bombs. Go ahead, Vic. So we we were kind of chatting earlier and uh, just wanted to to really bring light to something that I think is really important for newer salespeople, established salespeople, um, really anyone who really knows what they're doing in the game is going to expect this. But it's it's a decent onboarding process. I I got into an offer. Uh, you know, this last week and got to talking with the owner and he walked me through his onboarding process. And when I tell you it's detailed down to the teeth, like this is what you need. This is how many role plays I expect from you in the beginning. This is the script. This is what I need from you. I need you to memorize this. I need you to, to practice flowing off of this. I need you to watch all of these calls. There were so many videos to watch, so many calls to watch that they had a fast track to go through their onboarding process to get you started. And then they still expect you to go back and watch these calls and get familiarized with the team. Every salesperson's, all their calls are recorded. You can go through, there's a log of, you know, what closed, what didn't close. So you can look at different names and say, okay, this closed, that didn't close. Let me see what the differences are. Like you have so much at your disposal. It's almost like a training program. It's almost like you walked into a high ticket sales training program and you came out of it and you're like, wow, I really understand this business. I really understand what they're looking for. I understand what their clientele are. And I think it's super important to have that kind of an onboarding process. Because yep. I mean, you and I have both worked for, for jobs where the onboarding process is like, oh, so um, here's the script, um, if they even had that. And they're like, um, here is uh, the numbers that you call. And uh, yeah, good luck. Have fun. Yeah. Dude, it, it's, I want to add to that too, because like, yeah. <clears throat> like this is especially like as a sales rep you got to understand how much money like the owner is going to make from you and they're going to invest in you so like i think if you have a little bit more experience it's not as important but if if you're new in any way like you're not cracking six figures like it should feel like you just bought like a like a ten thousand dollar program going into an offer in terms of the amount of development support training Right. Because if you because like think about it, if you're going to make six figures, right, 10 to 20 percent commission industry wide on average. Right. Like the owner is going to make seven. And even if there's business expenses and all this stuff. Right. Based on your sales alone, he's probably going to make as much as you're making. Right. Like for, for themselves. Right. Like you're an asset. You're going to make them a lot of money. So like. You know, understand if you're new, like. Yeah. And if you walk into an offer. And they don't have that, then that tells you a lot about that business right offhand, right? It yeah. tells you that they're not established. It tells you that they don't really understand the the job that you're about to do. Because if they did, they would give you every tool imaginable to do it to the best of your ability because it only benefits them. It only benefits a business owner to overload you with like information and and resources and help in the beginning of the business. Because, I mean, if I go into something knowing full well what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to do it, the goods, the bads, the uglies, if I know all of that going in, I'm a better salesperson, which means I make more money, which means the business makes more money, which means the owner makes more money, the business scales, and all of a sudden, the dreams are realized, right? But yep. if I have no idea what's going on and I'm just winging it every day, then, bro, what do you expect? You expect... An, and then the business owner can come down and say, oh, well, you're not performing. It's like, well, what do you mean I'm not performing? I'm doing the best with what I have. You give me more information. You give me more resources. You give me more help to understand what you're looking for. And I can do that. I can I can provide you everything you need, but you haven't invested in me. So you expect me to invest all my time and all my energy into building this process for you. And you haven't invested anything in me. So there's no there's no equal share here. It's just yeah. me busting my butt to try to make you rich. Exactly. No, hundred percent. And it, like, I like what I like what you said about um, I like what you said about like if the like if it isn't there, it tells you a lot about the business. Yeah. Like it it, it tells you that the owner isn't that much of a practitioner because if mm -hmm. they're really good, if they have that, if they have the experience and expertise, and they understand sales. They can just give you their calls. They can just tell, you know what I mean? Yep. Like they can just give you their process. Yep. Right. What Here's what you'll find. If you're looking for red flags in companies, here's what you'll find a lot when you're doing the yeah. initial interviews. Yeah. Tell me not. Tell me not. 
this is what you're going to find a lot in like startups, right? The owner doesn't want to have to do sales calls, right? He mm -hmm. just isn't good at them. Sales isn't his thing, right? He's not a naturally gifted salesperson. So he wants to hire somebody else to do the sales and basically run the business yeah. outside of maybe fulfillment for 10% commission. Yeah. Like a lot, of, I fell into that trap my first week in high ticket. Same. Same. Yeah. I was in that trap, bro. Yeah. I was, I was heavy. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, what's funny though, is if I feel like if, if I don't have that as a salesperson, if you don't give me like the resources and the integrated onboarding process, that mm -hmm. tells me that your fulfillment's probably trash too. Ooh. That tells right. me that you're not fulfilling for your clients the way that you should be because you don't even have the foresight to see that, okay, my salesperson's going to need this, right? Yep. My salesperson's going to need this to sell my offer to the best of their ability. So that tells me that you're out of sync or you're out of touch. So to me, that says, okay, then maybe their fulfillment isn't that great either, which is another reason why they're they're plateaued where they are. Because maybe they can't, if they can't see that what I need, how can they see what their client needs to, to grow their business? Because every business has something to do with sales, right? right? So if you can't even stack your own sales, how are you going to teach another person to grow their own sales, like their sales? Like that tells me your fulfillment's off. Yep. And it's, dude, sales is a life skill, bro. Like in my opinion, sales and marketing, like those are life skills. Even if you don't have an affinity for marketing or an affinity for sales, learn it. Yeah. You know, you're going to take it with you in every business. Like you reading a sales book and or you reading a marketing book mm -hmm. is like the highest ROI thing you could ever do because you're going to use it in every business you ever go into, every interaction you ever have. Yeah. Like it, it's if somebody's too lazy to learn that like the most important skill, which is talking to other people, understanding how they think and being able to garner attention, which is what the economy is based on. Like, come on, look bro. at you using big words. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'll I, do it I, myself today. I love, I love how, you know, new people will come into the industry and they'll get so excited over an offer and they'll jump into the offer. And then two weeks later, they're like, this isn't working out. I don't know what's going on. And then they'll leave. Yeah. And, and I say, I love it because it's, it's like I, the, the mentality of let me get into this industry. Let me just take whatever comes to me and let me just kind of grab at straws. Right. Yeah. Mentality is, is going to block you because you have to think you've got to think, okay, as a business, we talk about this all the time. Sales is great to earn money because you have to position yourself. You have to think like a business owner, right? Yep. So if I go into a business and I'm thinking like a business owner, I see huge holes that will not allow my business, me to grow. So no fulfillment. I don't have onboard, a good onboarding process. There's no like script. There's no calls to listen to. There's no like leadership. Then, then what's going on? Why am I wasting any more of my time? Hit the road, Jack, and don't come back. Right, because because if no, <laughs> no more, no more, no more, no more. If you see all of that, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you even there? Still, yeah. like, run, run, run away from those offers because you're gonna spin your wheels and you're gonna spend your time wasting your time trying to build somebody's agency or somebody's coaching business or somebody's you know consulting business. You're gonna spend your time trying to build it from scratch, making ten percent of nothing because you can't making sales so you easy. don't have any resources oh 50 or nothing a lot of those companies right. oh, i'll give you 40 percent. okay right. cool and you know what i think that's not a bad idea if you're really experienced and you're at a point where you could just run the damn business yourself mm -hmm. it's not a bad idea to say hey dude let me get 30 percent equity of your company let me get 40 percent commission you handle all the client fulfillment so i'm only doing sales i might install a couple processes and systems and bring people in my network right yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you, you do the marketing and everything like that's not a bad idea. That's a nice hustle, yeah. right? Cause then you can help them sell the business and then, you know, 30% of equity from, you know, a million dollar value company alone, which is just a, like, you know, this is just a hundred grand a year. Yeah. Right. Or like 150 a year in sales, which is like 10 grand a month, which is nothing. Right. You're still, you're walking away with like 500 grand, you know, you're walking away with some cash. So that's something you could do uh, viably, like, big picture but if you're brand new like don't do that shit. yeah like, i was gonna say that's boss level right there 
that's like, all right, I'm in this game. I'm my goal isn't necessarily to make a bunch of money. I'm just here to on, on the front end. I want to back end make some money. So let me go yeah. find someone who needs some work and let me go in and work. Let me establish them. Let me build them. You've got to go in with the perception of, all right, I'm going to use all my skills and talents to build this business with the, with the goal of selling it later and getting equity from it. And yeah. that's what, that's how you have to go into it. But if, like you said, if you're brand new, bro, you're wasting your time. Yeah. If you're brand new, go be bottom of the totem pole somewhere established. Go work for someone who's got a crazy. Oh, bit. bro, I want to, I got to add to that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about this before the call. <laughs> I was listening to an interview, bro. And um, with, with this guy, I don't even know his name, like Robert or something, right? Prosperity. He has a hundred million dollar business, right? He started when he was 23. He was so broke. He couldn't afford a course. Couldn't afford to like do anything in terms of buying houses, nothing. So he's like, okay, cool. I want to do real estate flipping. That's my thing. I like that. I like real estate. Let me go work. Let me just call up a bunch of different companies that have the real estate and try to work for them so I can learn those skills. He called them. I'm going to work for you for three years. I'm going to work my ass off, right? He got a company. He worked for them for three years. At 26, he started his own business. At 30, his company is worth $100 million and he's driving in a Ferrari, right? Moral of the story is if you have a vision in terms of like what model or what industry you want to be a part of, you can also tie that to where you are. So if you want to be even like a mindset coach or like a life coach, like work for a very successful life coach, learn their internal structure and all the processes that they have in place now. And then you can do that for two or three years and become the expert because in sales too, you have to kind of become that expert. That's how people buy into you. Like I know my shit, right? Like, and then starting your business, like, dude, aren't like, like, look at Cole Gordon. This guy was selling for freaking, you know, he's selling for freaking uh, uh, Taylor Walton and them. And yeah. like, what? He's biggest like recruiter in the game right now. Yeah. And I, you know, like, it, so it, it's like, if that's kind of, if you know where you want to be in the future, you can align where you're selling in conjunction with that. Because in my opinion, like, I, I think being an employee is similar is similar to being like at a zoo, like you're an animal at a zoo. You know what I mean? Where like oh the food is provided to you, you're like you you know, like not that much responsibility. You're just kind of there chilling. You're safe. You're protected, right? And, and it's it's stable, right? Because mm -hmm. you're on a schedule in terms of when you get fed. When you're an entrepreneur, you're kind of you're you're the same animal, but you're out in the wild, mm -hmm. right? You're you're out in the wild and and you're kind of going out. So I think. We're designed to be out in the wild. We're the most powerful when we're out in the wild. We get to live our best lives when we're out in the wild. So I think like having a gig as a closer it, it, or anything, right? Any of these things, like cetera, whatever, like a job in general, it, it's in my opinion. And, you know, maybe, maybe you're just not. Actually, no, I think that's bullshit. I think we're all entrepreneurs. There's no fucking kid that says I must be scheduled and follow a strategic process. So I have safety. Yeah. and certainty that, you know that's bullshit Th those are things that are instilled that's freaking rockefeller and, and freaking henry ford <laughs> you know like come on bro like that's indoctrination like that's just comp that's yeah. just compliance you know like, so like Kobe says are you this are you the same animal but a different beast <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so like long story short i know it's kind of a funny rant but like i think working for somebody else is something you do for a couple of years. If you can align it with a path that you have and, and stay true to that vision, you're going to get so much more out of your gig. You're not just going to get paid and kind of zone out like you would yeah. in a job. You're going to say, oh, I can apply this in my business. Holy shit, I can use this when I have my business, right? I can do this. I can start to implement this. Is that how they do it? Oh, I can make this connection with this guy that might serve me two years down the fucking road that I wouldn't have made if I didn't have this vision in my head of having like an e-com store, of, uh, uh, of being this or, or, you know, having an agency. Like, yeah. like it, it's, it's absolutely... I think you don't need to do it, but you need to fucking do it. Like it, it's just so it gives it's, you purpose. It's funny that you say that because mm -hmm. you get a lot of salespeople that come into sales and they're like, I want to make a million dollars. Right. That's great. But the reality of it is, are there salespeople doing that? Of course. There's salespeople doing that. The reality of it is you're probably not going to. That's the reality, right? It's like the NBA, right? Are are people making a million dollars a year? In sales, of of course, there's people doing can I, that. Can I share something with that, bro? You can yeah, tell your point. I just want to share something. 
every salesperson I know that makes a million dollars a year in sales had to work more than 80 hours a week to do that 80 yeah. 90 100 hours a week to do that yep. and and most of them aren't doing it anymore yep. right it, like it's not sustainable continue. and that's that's exactly what I was going to say right it's it's like like the NBA right everybody wants to be a baller everybody wants to go in the NBA how many of that one percent of people actually have the opportunity to join the NBA and to play at the NBA level Right. Same thing with sales. You're like, oh, I want to make a million dollars a year. Okay, but what what a percentage of salespeople are doing that? And it's a very small percentage of salespeople. And like you said, they're working their butts off consistently, and then they do it for a short period of time, and then they're out. But in order to continue making that type of money, they have to put themselves in a position to passively, or I say passively with quotes because nothing's really passive, but. Yep. They have to put themselves to make that money easier in a smarter way. And if you really want to make a bunch of money, if that's your goal, if your goal is to make, you know, millions of dollars and, and you know, right off in the sunset, you've got to position yourself as a business owner. You've got to own something. You've got to have equity. You've got to be able to step back and say, okay, this is mine. And this is how I'm going to transition mine into money. Right. And so you've got to be thinking about that process. There's a, there's a, let me get biblical on you for a second. There is a story in the Old Testament that a lot of people understand and they know, you know, Pharaoh and Moses and let my people go and all of that, right? But yeah. something that a lot of, a lot of people miss over is when the children of Israel left Egypt, right? They didn't leave poor slaves. They left rich because they went in and they borrowed, the Bible says they borrowed from their neighbors, right? So they borrowed from the Egyptians, mm -hmm. they took gold and silver and jewels and animals and livestock and everything, and they left rich. The principle is called, it's called gleaning from the, from the Egyptians, spoiling the Egyptians, right? So mm -hmm. when you're, in, and the thought is this, when you're in jobs, when you're in a sales job and your owner is great at marketing, learn everything you can from that owner about marketing. So that yeah. when you go to your next job, you take that with you, right? Then you learn about sales from another one. Then you take that with you. And then you learn about, you know, onboarding and, and how to treat your employees. And then you take that with you. All of a sudden, you spoiled the Egyptians in, in your life to that point. So now you're rich. You're rich with assets. Now take those assets and build something with them. And then you become, you know, some the person that somebody's trying to spoil, right? Yeah. It's like, there's exactly. so many... There's so many different things that you can just glean, right, in this business. And that's the whole point. That's the whole point of this podcast. That's the whole point of other things. It's just glean information. Take little nuggets of knowledge and store them away in your pocket. You may not need it now, but you're going to need it later when you try to position yourself as someone who doesn't have to work and bust their butt every day. Someone who can yep. make it passively. Someone who gets a check every single day. And dude, like how interesting do you fucking be if like you learn everywhere you possibly go? Ugh. right like yeah. you're just an interesting person you can this this allows you to network in any room yep. right to just just because people want to talk to the person who's interesting you yeah. know the, the person with experience and knowledge and like yeah. insights right celebrated i mean look at the most interesting man alive like we we literally like s make it a celebrity and we, we celebrate the fact that people are interesting and that's what makes them great that's what makes them social media influencers that's what makes them Yep. You know, celebrities that's what puts them in movies is they're interesting and people want to watch them yeah so it's being on that it's being multi-dimensional bro if you yeah. look at the paul look at the paul brothers man like these guys Dude. are boxers they're youtubers like you know like like it, it's any anybody who, who like who does multiple things it's just so much cooler yeah. um it, it's always so much cooler I, I think that's why uh you know like marvel how they had those little crossovers like, yeah or was it like DC, whatever? They had little crossovers. Like, yeah, he's he's Arrow, yeah. but he's also a co-star, mm -hmm. right? But he's also on this one, right? And it's yeah. like, it's just cooler, you know? It's just different. Um, yeah. And then, and then people can tie into your, people tie into your, your vision and your celebrity, right? And they right. follow everywhere. And so then people want to have you in their company and people want to have you around them because of what you bring. Of yep. the things that you bring, of the business that you bring their way. That's why network yep. is so chill, right? It's so important because yep. you can go somewhere. Jay Daniel can go somewhere and they'll be like, oh, that's Jay Daniel Castro. Oh, he's got all these YouTube. He's got all these followers. He's got this, this 
you know, this this following, he's got this celebrity. Let me align myself with him. Let me rub shoulders with him so people can see me rubbing shoulders with him. And then all yeah. of a sudden, those people will follow me too. And then you yeah. can go do this and I can go do that. And then all of a sudden, I'll get some of his followers too. That's networking in a nutshell. You know what's you know what's so cool about that? You know how you can have like a little like when you network, you have a little statement. So we, you know, we we help people achieve X, Y, Z without having to deal with A, B, C. Yeah. Right. Do you know anybody who you right? Like is you have your little like catchphrase, right? If you think about how somebody describes you when you're multidimensional, think about it, right? Victor, right? Like, 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 let's say, like, like whoever, right? Like, yeah. think about how they're described. People are going to try to get like the biggest emotional response from somebody else when they talk about you. So they're just going to highlight all the different things you do. Right. right. So like this guy is a professional fighter and he's a business owner and he's a family man and he's a rapper. Isn't that crazy? Bro, Jesse Itzler, this guy was a rapper. He ran Vita Coco, the, the, the jet company. Um like his wife like like my guy is is balling but he's yeah. it's because he like part of that is just being so interesting like you're a billionaire but you're you're also this like how how does that even make sense how do you do that like yeah. you you're a billionaire you ran 113 miles at, at age 50 why would you do that and you took a cold plunge in the ice with david goggins right like yeah it, that becomes your brand when you're networking too and it yeah. it's it, yeah, you know, you know what's funny about that though? Uh huh. It's the people who are grinding it out are going to be like, "Man, how did you do that? How did you do all that and be a billionaire?" Because he grinded it out just like you did, but he put more effort and more work into it. So you grind and grind and grind with a vision and a goal of one day I don't have to grind as hard. One yeah. day my celebrity is going to speak for itself. My business is going to speak for itself. My effort is going to speak for itself. So then I have the time and the energy to go cold plunge with david goggins on a wednesday when everybody else is grinding and working i have the time to run 113 miles because i know that my business is still running even though i'm running too you know what i mean yep. and that's what we're talking about ass off. You build miles. you build right it's too long <laughs> you, you build you build something and if you're coming into sales with the idea of i'm going to be a salesperson till i die you're kidding yourself you're kidding yourself and you're shelling yourself short because your vision isn't big enough. If your dreams aren't bigger than the the effort, you know, yeah, then you're fooling yourself. 100%. And I think, yeah, it, it does come back to vision. Cause I don't know for me, bro, I feel like if somebody's like, I want to be the best like sales rep and make as much money as possible. There's not a lot of room in there for morals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's the sole focus. Yeah. Right. There, there's just like, it, it's kind of like business, right? The people that go into business, I just want to make money and have freedom. Right. Like those are the guys that somebody, those, those are the other guys with the agency that somebody mm-hmm. gives them five grand a month plus whatever the fuck they're spending for ad spend and they don't get them results. Yeah. They're, you know, like it, it, it's, I think when you have like the bigger and it's like, who, who, who do you feel better around? Right. Like the guy that like really cares about their clients gets them results. Right. Like, so it's like, um, I think operating from a vision that has to do like, you, you know what I mean? Like more than that. I, I just, I just think that's huge too. Cause otherwise um, I do see a lot of people getting screwed and, and, yeah. you know, like this industry and a lot of different offers. Um, and usually it's because like, the company wants to maximize ad spend and the rep wants to make as much money as possible. Mm-hmm. And so they'll, they'll push people into things that they probably shouldn't have been pushed into. And if they weren't incentivized to do it, they probably wouldn't have, right. If their mom was like, should I do it or should I not? Yeah. They probably said, no, I don't do that shit. Yeah. Right. But as soon as there's money on the line, they can get yeah. paid. Now it's like, that's the best damn thing you could ever fucking do. Change your fucking life right now. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Right. Like how many times oh. have we seen that? How many times have we seen businesses that are just taking people's money oh dude and and that's the sad part about this industry is that there are people out there who not only will do it there are people out there who will sell it in a heartbeat right and then they'll get heralded as oh, this great salesperson because he's making all this money he's driving cars he's you know he's got the girls he's got the houses or whatever or she's got the guys and the cars and the houses like whatever it's it's it goes both ways 
Yeah. And it's like, okay, but what did you have to do to get there? Yeah. Who did you have to who did you have to screw over to get to that point? And like that's the sad thing about this industry. It's like there's a lot of people who are screwing people over, taking money from good people just to make money for themselves. Like you, said, like you said, when you start making that million, when you start making all that money, like the morals go down downhill because it's all about the million. It's all about the money at that point. Yes, you can be you can be a great salesperson in a in a great offer, and that happens. You know, you're a great salesperson in a great offer. That's the best way to make money, right? You can be a great salesperson in a horrible offer and make nothing, but you're still a great salesperson. Yeah. You find a great offer and boom, like you're the sky's the limit. But there's there's those people as well who are mediocre salespeople in a great offer and they're just trying to kill people for making money. Right. Dude, yeah, hundred percent. It dude, if 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 you look at um the the who are the two richest people in the world on paper, right? Maybe there's others and you know, perhaps oil or different industries, but According to the league, according to like what is known to us mere mortals, yeah. Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk are basically the richest men alive. Yeah. Right? I just happen to have read both of their uh biographies and you know <laughs> just just and, so happened to stumble across. Yeah, just you know, just the, the, the information. I I saw the book and um I opened it and I closed it and it just 800 pages of knowledge just appeared in yeah, my brain. Like, but like, <laughs> dude, neither of them said, I want to be a quadruple billionaire. Yeah. Right. They just said, this shit is cool. Yeah. Elon Musk was four. He was drawing pictures of like electric cars, flying cars, like, like rocket ships. Yeah. Literally, it's four rocket ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like, I think you got to have that almost like, pure level of, of purpose behind what you're doing um it can't be solely money-based because i don't know that's just my opinion on it dude like it, it's yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it goes it goes back to what we were saying in the beginning about like having that vision and knowing what you're trying to accomplish right and knowing what you're trying to do and then picking offers that help you do that right and, and like we started this talking about onboarding processes and, and getting through them and, and what's a good onboarding process. But the reason why we talked about an onboarding process is because we want you to understand that like, you've got to have certain tools to make certain things happen. Right. If you don't have those tools, you're never going to make that happen. So if you're struggling to accomplish your goals and see your goals, look at the tools you have, I'm not saying it's all the business owner's fault. You have some personal responsibility as well. Like the effort you put in, and the time that you put in and the energy that you put into something. But if you're busting your butt and you're putting all this effort and energy into something and it's not working, look at the tools that you have and figure out, okay, is this an offer that I need to stay in due to what's available? Oh, oh Victor, dude. Hey, guys, also, I want to just touch on the last point I made because like you may have the thought, but, 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 um, I'm in... If you're in scarcity, you need to get out of scarcity, right? Like, because when you're at, when you're in scarcity, you make bad decisions, right? I always recommend get out of scarcity. Like currently with the current way the inflation, the economy works, you probably, you want to make anywhere from like 70 to like 110,000 a year. That income in most places in the world, you're pretty good. Like you're out of scarcity, right? Unless you're a dumbass and you have a, you know, $6,000 a month car payment, like yeah. You know, you're good. You're out of scarcity. There you can start to think more clear. Most people are making dumbass decisions because they're in scarcity. So continue your point. I just wanted yeah, to add. That. That's that's very true. And you'll stay in scarcity if you don't know how to pick and choose. If you don't know how to evaluate, you know, where am I supposed to be? And how do I get to where I want to be? You know what I mean? Like, and, and we've talked about it millions of times, but like, you've got to be honest with yourself and say, this is where I'm at. That's where I want to be. Like, let's get there. Let's do the work to get there. And dude, I think it, it's powerful. A vision is powerful, right? A vision is powerful. Having a clear it's path true. that is, is powerful, but it still takes a bunch of work, bro. It takes a bunch of work and you've got to be willing to do it and put it in there. Well, he said, 
All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for jumping on and joining us. This was a fun episode talking about everything from the global enslavement of man. <laughs> <laughs> all the way back to onboarding processes so thanks for joining us enjoy the rest of your day we're out peace